Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as we continue where we left last episode as we roll the dice against this guy. He looks to have... Doesn't he have like a different sort of... Ah, he's just the, the draw... The, like the drawing style, it's fine, it's fine. So we got a bunch of dice, and uh, can we ask questions to him? This place seems pretty empty. Yeah, I was thinking you could tell me the best way to reach the North Gate. Mm, that's That's a good one. That's a good one. Two ones. I don't think he's gonna fall for that, but I'm not gonna go with that. Let's see. So, let's go with this place seems very empty, because we can do that. Beat one, three. Well, it's a slow night tonight, that's all. It's usually busier than this, then? Um, I don't know. I can, I can go with that. Yeah, sure. He's calling for two of right there. Let's go with B2, threes. Mm. Welcome to Lower Kyrae, the poor end of a poor city port. Not many people around here can afford a drink or gamble. Well, then it's not a great place to have an inn, then, is it? Uh, let's see. I don't want to go... So he's calling for two or for three of those. I believe that he has that. Unfortunately, I don't know how likely he'll say that it is that I can do this, basically. I'm gonna call for it. Yeah, great place to have an inn. Well... Time was, we had a lot of visitors come through the gate. Things didn't used to be so tight around here. Yeah, he doesn't have three of those, I don't think. I would like to know what changed, but I can't. I'm gonna call it. I am gonna call it. Is that so? There's stuff up here. There are four twos, the innkeeper... Oh, yeah. Yeah, so there are four twos, the innkeeper wins the round. Let's roll the dice again. There were four twos. Damn it, this guy. Yeah, I should have. I should have guessed. I should have guessed. We can win this. We can win this. It's all fine. Mm. See what he says. What he says to our question. You in Carrie for a while, are you? Well, a short while, yeah. Oh, he's calling for that already? Oh, crap. Um, that, can I call that as well? Can I call three fours? Uh, three two? Three threes, rather? Not too long, I hope, I say. Ah. You'll need entertaining then. For four? Damn, man, I'm gonna call five. I think, he, yeah, I do not need, I do not need enter, enter, any entertainment you might offer. Mmm. I didn't mean nothing funny, only that the festival is running at the moment. You should visit it, the fair always, uh, the fair always welcomes fresh pocket, I mean, fresh faces, fresh faces. So he's calling for six of these, unless he has, so I have two, unless he has four, which I doubt he does, I'm gonna call. Yeah, he doesn't. Only th only four? Huh, the round is yours. Okay. Okay, so he didn't... Yeah. Mm, I'm beginning to understand how they think. Okay, so we're, we're at an even footing right now. Okay, so we have one, two, th and two fours. Let's go ahead and uh, let's ask something. Tell me about... Yeah, tell me about the festival. Well, it's held every year on the common land by the river. Quite the spectacle. Lots to see and do. Uh, well, I'm gonna call for... Let's see, what can I call here? I can call that. Can you earn any money at the festival? Yeah, that would be an interesting thing. Uh, I wish I could fight. The prize for the best fighter is large enough. Well, he's calling... Okay, if he doesn't have one... He doesn't have one. The only two fours, the innkeeper wins around. Come on! Was that a pri... What, what, what did he say about the prize? Um... I wish I could fight, he replies. The prize for the best fighter is large enough. Oh, that's that's an interesting one. So you're new on the fair city, is it? Uh, is you? Can you tell? Let's see. Yeah, let's go with that. How can you tell? <laughs> Come on. This inn serves the guard and those coming through the gate. And you're no guardsman. So he's calling for two of those. And I'm going to call for... Uh, yeah, I just arrived today. Hmm. Welcome to Kyrie. You'd better keep your purse strings tight. Yeah, I'm call I'm having some trouble there already. Let's see. Can I call you for three of those? Yeah, yours must yours must be getting tighter. There's no one drinking here. Nah. The guards the guard are all on alert. None have time for recreation. Okay, I think he's full of it. He has four. So I'm gonna call. That's an inter interesting to hear. And yeah, there are only three. The round is mine. Good, good, good. Okay, so we're back on even footing. He's a good guy. He's a good, a good player, I mean. 
Oh, we got a good one right uh, right now. This is a good hand. A good hand. Yeah, because I was thinking in between episodes how to do this. Basically, you need to call as high as you can right off the bat to try and bluff them out. And then it's easier for them. Because, I, I think, anyway. I heard a bang sound in the fields as I came here. Yeah, I did that. I heard that. Didn't sleep outside because of that. A bang sound. Could be anything. Uh, so he's got two of those. I'm going to call for... I... If he doesn't call the next one... He's, he's gonna call this one. He's gonna win me. Yeah, that's a problem. So are there, are there wolves in Carrie? He's gonna call. Oh, damn it. Yeah, I've heard of wolves in Carrie. Didn't hear... Didn't used to hear of them, but recently there's been reports in some circles. Let's reveal the dice. Uh, yeah, I did! Yes, I owned that one. He had one of those. Oh, what a dumb ass. Look at that. He betted on... I mean, he's not that dumb. It was... Okay, I need to, I need to know that. I need to know how to go with that. So he was he was saying about wolves. I've heard of wolves in Kerry. Uh, didn't he used to hear them, but recently there's been reports in some circles. Okay, so let's see. So he calls for one of those. I call for three of those right away. Uh, because whatever he calls after that is gonna it's gonna be almost impossible. I I'm gonna so he only has two dice, so I can I can basically tell whatever comes after that. So I'll raise that. Oh, I think I'm... I think I'm at the... Oh, although he might not have one of those. Huh. Let's see what he does. Okay, he called. Let's see if he's... Let's see if he's playing the game. Oh, he's not! He didn't bet on a, on a dice he didn't have. I thought he might have betted like on a two or something. And I just assumed that he had one, because it makes sense, but... Yeah, that's an interesting tactic. Huh, but of course you need to be playing against somebody that... Does. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So it seems that we are at the end of our conversation here, and everything is in our hands. And let's begin. So I'm gonna call for three fives, because I got the best hand. And uh, actually, I'm not gonna call for that. I'm not gonna call for that. I'm gonna call for one five. Uh, so he said the guard were on alert. How come? Well, it's a current matter. Not outsider's business. So, yeah, I'm intrigued, though. I am, so he's not, yeah, I could call him, and I would know he would be, yeah, I could call. So he, if I don't call, he's going to think, I don't know how intelligent the, intelligent the AI is going to be, but I'm going to be for two fours right there. Yeah, I'm intrigued, man. Tell me more. I don't know anything, and if I did, I wouldn't go telling outsider senses for first noble. And he calls. Huh, right. And there are... The three fourths. The game is yours. Look at that. We sleep for free tonight, man. That was that was good. You collect your gold and the count. Oh wait a minute. We didn't sleep for free. We got the money. You collect your gold from the count once more, and the innkeeper reluctantly counts out another seven in your into your palm. Yeah, I was unlucky. It happens. You want to try another? Actually, I wouldn't mind that, but yeah, I've played enough. Uh, you tell him, happy with your winning streak. Very well. The innkeeper smiles. Room costs seven gold pieces. Then, as I said. Okay, and I got one clue. What's that clue all about? So, clue. Oh, it was because of the, about the guards. So, first noble Sans... Oh, that's right! Lord Sans is the first noble of, of Carrie. So he said something about that. That's right, didn't he? He said... What did he... No, I want to... I want to see what he said. Um... So, Sans is for first noble. Call. Okay, Sans is for first noble. What the hell was that? Okay, so we can go to our room. We don't really have a choice, do we? We can. We can leave, but I'm not going to leave. Uh, let's see how things go. Hopefully he doesn't steal from me in the night or something terrible. I didn't press on. I didn't try to rob him of his money, so it should be okay. You hand over seven gold pieces. The man shows you upstairs to a room. It seems clean enough. There are no rats on the bed, and the linen seems to have been washed at least once this month. Oh, that's nice. That's pretty good. Let's go on in. And after your long day of walking, the thought of a real bed is a welcome relief. You settle down. And we gained one stamina. That's really nice. You settle quickly onto the straw mattress. The sound of the city drift to you, uh, the sounds of the city drift to you on the air night, on the night air, um, shouts and screams and the occasional distinct howl. You doze fitfully. Yeah, that's gonna be a werewolf or something, or something terrible. Your dreams, because the game is just mentioning that too much. Your dreams, when they come, are of the wall, like a towering monster drenched in moss and slime, and the gate its wide open maw. As you watch, he reaches down with fingers made from flagpoles and skewers the old beggar man, lifting him flailing into the air. Meanwhile, the one-armed prisoner throws the knuckles of his missing hand onto the uh, bench over and over, calling endlessly to himself. 
and it is as though you can see the crown sitting in the dust of the far si on the far side of the north gate, so close and yet out of reach. Well, I wouldn't say so close. Can we go? Can we not? Oh, okay, the next morning, I guess. Let's go. You feel better f uh, for your night's rest. Going downstairs, you find the bartender miserably counting coins on the bar. Need anything? He asks, hopefully. Well, provisions. He doesn't have that, though. The innkeeper shakes his head. I still don't have any food. Try the flayer's hut. Mill road up, up through the fields. It does, a good, it does a good stew. You thank him and take your leave of the inn. Well, I hope at least it was worthwhile. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, I got 16 gold on me, and I'm pretty sure I could have gotten more money out of him, but he probably would have just, like, tried to kill me or something. I have no idea. Outside, the air tastes fresh. It has rained a little overnight. A little distance from here, a busy crossroads marks the start of the city. Yes, it does. And we got a little bit of a hill over here. And we got a festival of uh, thieves. Oh, boy. Uh, we're gonna need to be a thief ourselves. Let's see what the whale is. The whale is a careful, cr slow creature of great wisdom and deep honor. <sighs> I'm not really that. Bring back the, go the the dolphin, though. Oh, look at that. I'm back at um, at full stamina. Why? I didn't look at... I saw 19, but that's perfect. Let's go to the crossroads. Uh, following the track for a few minutes, you reach a junction where three roads begin. These are the outskirts of Carre. Huts, huts huddle like beggars on either side of the tracks leading uphill into the city port. Pause to look around. It must be clear to everyone around you, uh, around, that you are a stranger in these parts. The city's inhabitants, a multitude of malevolent creatures who would kill for the laces of your boots, turn to watch you as they pass. You are sport, a figure to be jostled and robbed, and one who will most likely fall prey to the strange elaborate system of traps laid across Carry by the early settlers to protect themselves from one another. Let's uh, look at the paths here. There are more people than uh, there are more people here than you've seen in a long time. You cast an eye across the faces to see if any are Flanker, the assassin you met outside Torrepani, your only friend in this city. Uh, okay, so let's see. I want to go left. Let's look left. Uh, to the left, you see a group of scruffy youngsters walking up the road with packs on their backs. Ahead is the main road into the center of Carrade, surface rutted from cartwheels. Further in the distance you see fields. This is the, ro the route taken by supply wagons to the docks. To the right, the track heads towards fields. A hut stands proud a little further on. The business of this place is confusing, but you will have, a simply, you will have to simply strike out. The north gate awaits. Just at the, m uh, just at the moment, a cart rolls down the road from the right and, caress and careers around the corner to take the main track ahead. On its back are stacked several crates. One tatters, teeters for a moment, then falls near your feet, its lid cracking open. Uh, let's look at it. Let's look at the in the crate. Kneeling down in the mud, you prize open the crate with your fingers. Inside is a pile of smashed bottles. Thick purple liquid swirls about, littered with shard of uh, littered with shards of glass. There are perhaps four bottles still intact, but you recognize the smell. It's Blimberry, the potion that many with many healing properties. Oh yeah. Let's take two. And why would I leave? Why I don't want? I don't need the four. I think taking four is probably going to be problematic because we're not going to be able to carry all these bottles with us. We're going to break them anyway. We're going to be robbed anyway, but so we do. who cares? I got robbed by Elvins at the beginning of the first part, so I'm just, it's going to be a terrible. But anyway, let's take two. Let's see what happens. You take two bottles, uh, two of the bottles, wipe them down as best you can on the grass nearby. You put them into your pack. A lucky find indeed. Blimberry juice will heal you and will also do for a meal. Oh, that's fantastic. Let's look at it. Uh, of course, yeah, it's not, it's not, it doesn't have an item. I look how, I like how they are photos in here. Let's see, magical items, I would think. Yeah, two doses of Bleemberry juice. And that's pretty good. We got, uh, no, not that one. Thank you. Uh, what about, oh, we don't have rations in here? Oh, because we don't have actual rations. Okay, that's good. So we can go right, and we're gonna go right because we need rations, even though we did get that Bleemberry juice. I wonder if you could get the four without much trouble. I don't think so. I think the game was just gonna punish me for being greedy or something. Hmm. Alas, we will. I will find that on my own when I replay this game after I'm done with the fourth part, and we're still on the second one. So let's see. You head right along a wide track until you reach a large hut. It is the only building on this path that is still standing. Either side are empty plots. Once the houses of the farmers who planted the fields to the north, they are now collapsed and thick with gripweed. Gripweed, huh? It seems that here in the shadow of the city wall is not a place people choose to leave. Let's uh, look at the remaining hut. By the side of the door to the hut is a sign delicately, pa de delicately painted, 
chain maker. The door is just a crack ajar, and from within you hear a gentle tinkling sound, metal and on metal, as though a creature in a chainmail dress was endlessly pacing the floor. Uh, let's look ahead. From oh, like hmm. from somewhere further on comes the falling and rising sound of a crowd. Some kind of event is taking place. There are several places you could go next. Oh, uh, so we, I, I couldn't listen. I'm gonna go to the chain. What? Oh, wait a minute. Cut through the fields. How do I get to the place where it sells the nice stew? I wanna. Hmm. Let's go to the chain maker over here and see what happens. You push open the hut door and enter. It is dark inside. The floor is, is sawdust, and the air smells of oil, polish, and burnt metal. From the ceiling hanging like ivy are metal chains of all length and thickness. Some suitable for machinery, some for oxen, and others for arms and feet. The chains sif shift and whisper to themselves. There seems to be no one here. There is another room beyond. Its door is hanging open. I'm gonna call out. Um... I'm good. Yeah, I'm gonna call out. Him. Although searching the room, I'm gonna search the room. Let's go with that one. No shop owner in Carry should leave their wares unattended. You begin to carefully search the room, trying to not set the chains to rattling. This is not gonna go well. This is not gonna go well. I am gonna look at this. Just look at this. How the hell were are you not gonna be able to? What? How can I you not set the chains to rattling? Anyway, let's look under the table. Seems like a easier. Target, you start your search under the work table. There is nothing but dust and wood ticks there. Let's search another time and then we'll stop the search. Let's um, look near the door to the shop. No, look, let, search along the left wall. Something. Oh, I got. Oh, that's nice. Next, you look near the left wall and come across a small box containing three gold pieces, which you take. Okay, let's stop searching. You change your mind about completely lifting the shop. Let's call out the chain maker. Hello? Is anyone there? You call, abandoning your quiet search. There's a, surf a shuffling beyond the far door, and then a figure emerges. It is the Chainmaker. He's a Svin. One of the of that race of men who works from the village of Torepani. You what? He replies gruffy, gruffly. You want chains? Uh, w maybe. I... I... Yes. I... Yes. You look around the shop, a chain, uh, a chain after an unremarkable chain. The chain maker watches you and points with a claw. That one, he indicates a short length of, sh of silver. Magic chain. So what does he do? Magic, the stubborn creature replies. And how much? He sizes you up, thinking you must be wealthy. It's five gold pieces. Uh... I think he's scamming me. Yeah, I I'll buy it. He went over the five gold pieces he wants, happy that three of those five pieces are his anyway. You shake the chain maker's hand and take the chain. It is clearly enchanted and... Oh, nice. And, and the ends seem to snap and bite at one another like, another, uh, like our amorous snakes. Good for taking out their knees, the chain maker explains. You head out of the shop. Thank you very much. Well, that was a good one. That was a definitely good one. I didn't want to say no, because it would probably just... Okay, right on, you go. And I, you know, I wanted to haggle there, but I couldn't. Uh, so we lost two gold coins, but we gained an item. And that is a magical item. No, it is not a magical item. It is, uh, it is a weapon. It is a weapon. Oh, silver chain. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go. Let's see. So we could walk on or go through the fields. So what did it say over there? I can't click there. Or could go back there. I don't know where to go. This looks so nice. Look at it. Look at all the the houses and all of that. So much so much places so many places for me to get killed and, and robbed. And this huge look at this huge road right there. There's like no way for me to if I get in there, I'm just gonna get killed. Let's look back zoom back. Yeah, this is kind of Probably not the road we want to take. I uh, think I'm thinking I'm gonna need to cross the bridge right there or something, because that's the gate I need to go to. Uh, so I don't really know where to go. I kind of want to maximize the amount of stuff I get, but since the bl this is the blind playthrough anyway, so who knows? Let's go through the fields. Let's go through the fields and see what happens. You strike out across the fields away from the path heading towards the rising land and the river. Somewhere in the center of Carre are the docks, a busy place where you should be able to find somewhere to stay overnight and perhaps learn more about the city. You crest the rise where the grass grows thin, then pause at a sound from behind you. It is a quiet of danger drawing from of, of a dagger drawing from a sheath. Oh boy. Draw your sword. You spin around, drawing your sword as you turn to find yourself facing a thug armed with a short dirk and crackling with the crackling, 
cackling with glee. The smile drops a bit when he realizes he has been spotted, but he waves the blade at you nonetheless. Uh, let's kill him, yeah. I... Ooh, sir, you are gonna die. You launch forward with your sword. Now, I'm not gonna go full out. I think this should be enough. And I think he's gonna defend anyway. Let's thirst. Oh, he didn't defend. And I got him for four points of damage right there. He's exhausted right now. The thug is perhaps crazy. He screams wildly. Perhaps crazy. <laughs> yeah, he screams wildly as he hur hurdles hurdles toward forward. He, uh, you raise your own sword for a brutal attack and knock him to the grass. The thug can barely find his balance, and he shifts his grip on his dagger. Okay, he's gonna f go for a small attack. This should be enough. It should be more than enough, actually. Let's cut. Yeah, that was not more than enough. I mean, it was enough, but, well. You keep up the pressure, you climb an outcrop and leap forward, lashing out with your sword as you land. Uh, his own half-hearted blow is knocked away. The thug is limping now and cruising and cursing with fear, and uh, he steps back. So he's gonna go for a, v a defense there, and I'm gonna go for a very small attack. Damn it! Damn it! Then he catches you off guard. You try a fast attack, keeping yourself as much covered as you can. The thug steps quickly. The impact is enough to send you reeling. Okay, I think I'm gonna go for that one. That was good. Okay, and he's down. Damn it, why didn't I press on? I didn't. wasn't even looking at his health. <sighs> Decent dwelling. Eh, I could try again, but let's not do that. I haven't done that in the past, and I'm not gonna, not gonna do it now. We're gonna leave with, our, with the consequences of my stupidity. He looks over his shoulder, you seize, uh, and you seize the moment to strike. Swinging with expert precision and all of your strength. Your strike is more than the thug can take. He strikes the ground quite dead. Let's continue. With the, th the thug dead, the field falls quiet once more. Let's touch his body, of course. And we got two coins for two stamina. That's okay. That's not too bad. That's it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, you quickly rifle through uh, rifle the thug's body. Uh, apart from his dirk, a useless little blade, he is carrying only a couple of gold pieces, which you take, and a couple of what looks like gambling chips. Look like gambling chips. Did I get the weapon? I should have gotten the weapon. I didn't get the weapon. Why is it useless? It's a dagger. It can be used to clean out the nails or whatever. Anyway... Uh, clean my nails, clean my nails. Let's see, so what, what exactly... So I, what, what did I get? Oh, the gambling chips. Oh, three. Okay, thought it were two. Uh, okay, we're good to go, so now, now where to? Oh boy, I don't have a choice. I need to go over there. I need to follow the path. We're going through the fields. Hopefully good stuff is in here. The path winds through the fields, passing an orchard on one side. The trees are dying and bare of apple. On the other side, across muddy fields, you see the colors of a flag of fest uh, flags of a festival. Then the view is shrouded by tall fences on either side. Let's look at the fences. You pause to look at the fences. The fields they contain seem ordinary enough, but for some reason the fences themselves are two or three times their height. There are no ladders to climb over that you can see, and no gates. Perhaps using magic uh, might give you an advantage? Let's look through the fence, fence first. Peering through the fence, you see a square field of very long grass, which seems to be ungrazed, and which no one has cropped in a long time. Anything might be hidden in there. Uh, let's cast a spell here. I, if I can cast the big... The big is so helpful, and I think I can. Let's cast. Oh, I can't. Oh, that was that was the wrong thing. There we go. I got the big right there, and it only costs one stamina, so that's good enough. You cast the spell, growing to three si three times your normal size, easily tall enough to see over the fences. But there is nothing in the field they contain except for long grass, which doesn't seem to so long anymore. Let's st step over the fence. You step over the fence into the field of long grass. Let's go. The giant spell fades, leaving you standing in a field of grass that comes up almost to your neck, surrounded on all sides by a tall fence. The field appears to be empty, however. Search the grass. It's gonna be a snake in here. Oh boy. Uh, you crouch low and feel around in the grass to see if there is anything hidden there. Suddenly, something grabs your wrist, holding you down low. Let's well, struggle free here. You try to tug your arm free, but in the thrashing around, you, su you succeed only in tangling your other limbs up in whatever it is that holds you, uh, that hold, that has hold of you. You are now fully held and being pulled down towards the earth. Oh, I can pray for aid. Oh yeah, I can pray for aid. That's good. Let's pray for aid. You begin a quick and fervent prayer to the dolphin, and after a moment, you feel the grip on your arms and legs loosening. You waste no time and hurry away up. Uh, away up the fence like a spider dropping back down gra gratefully onto the path. Oh, that was a waste! And now I can heal up? Oh boy, that was such a waste. Oh man, that's what I get. 
Uh, I probably could have fought that, maybe. I don't know. Probably lost my sword or something like that. Something terrible. Looking back, the field looks like nothing but a field of grass. If it weren't for the red marks on your wrists, you would believe you had imagined the wall affair. Yep. Yep. Let's continue on. Push forward towards north and see what happens over there. Man, we're, we're moving fast in this. We're moving fast. You emerge onto a wide road that leads up a gentle slope towards a cliff edge. Uh, let's look down the road. Looking back downhill, you see a few distant buildings, and beyond the point where the three roads into Carey diverged. Yeah, I... yeah, can I... can I go down there? Let's look at the cliff, though. You turn to look up at the cliff, which rises suddenly out of the middle of the fields along its ridge. It is a line of finer buildings, though most have fallen into wreck and ruin. Time to move on. Yep, time to move on indeed. Let's go back downwards, because I don't want to move too fast. I want to see things. Nope. There we go. I don't know what happened there. I clicked again and kind of... Screwed up something. You turn back towards the south wall of Carey and follow the main road downhill through the fields. After a short while, you notice the smoking fire pit off to the left. A narrow track leads away to the right. Let's look at the fire pit. You pause to look over the fence towards the fire pit. However, uh, whoever was there must have left only recently as the smoke still rises and the smell of cooked meat lingers. Uh, and along the track, we have that one on the other side of the track, the of the road. The track winds through meager fields. In the distance, you can see the buildings of one of the city's ghettos, and presumably the path is for workers to come out of the farms. Well, one building in particular looks quite grand and stands alone, right on the edge of the farmland. Which way will you go? Well, meat. I want food. I really need that. Or I could go keep going downwards. Let's see if I can. This this the this game seems a little bit more. Open worlded, I think. You clamber over the fence and stride across the field towards the smoking remains of a fire. There is a wonderful smell of cooked pork on the air, and the ground is covered in scraps of meat, but there is no one here, and nothing on offer to buy. Huh. Well, we're gonna search around next episode, but for now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been the Sorcery. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye bye.